researcher from SRI International. And I'm Josie Chang Order with CU Boulder. And welcome to video number four, Open-Ended Talkback Boards and Analyzing Data. The last time we talked about developing talkback boards with closed-ended prompts related to outcomes you want to evaluate. Today we'll look at what the data from one talkback board might show you, how you might want to follow up with it, and also talk about open-ended talkback boards. You may remember from the last video, from Mo's talkback board of next time I want to, the first thing we see is that there were only four people who said this was a one-time experience, which is a really good indicator. Most people want to come back. Those people mostly want to keep doing the same thing or trying something completely different. This is also good. It tells us that they see the studio as a place to keep messing around with their current interests and as a place to discover new interests. Four people want to do something similar, but a bit harder. These four people are really trying to level up their skills. So from this data, we'd want to follow up and find out what other kinds of activities participants would like to see at the studio. One way to do that would be simply to ask that as an open-ended question to be answered with a sticky note or written on the talkback board itself. Our library partners have also developed open-ended talkback boards as sentence starters. While questions are great, these sentence starters encourage participants to fill in the blank in ways that focus on a particular outcome. For example, you can see some of these prompts from Mark at the Los Angeles Public Library will help with future program development. Today I learned this project was fun because, this project was hard because, and then the last one is a very open-ended question of anything else you'd like to say. So from here you can see Mark is interested in understanding, did participants actually learn anything from the project today? Is this project fun and something that he could repeat or are there ways to, to think about how to make other programs fun? And then the idea of, of asking this project was hard because kind of gives Mark a couple of directions to go. You can think about this as showing how you can continue to keep a project challenging or think about how to make it less difficult to meet the needs and interests of your participants. Other prompts like Mo's about the studio can help staff understand whether patrons view the studio as a place they can go to pursue a wide range of interests. So for Mo, we have two different open-ended talkback boards. One that reads, the studio is my place to. The other talkback board says, I will come to the studio again because. The prompt, the studio is my place to, not only tells Mo about the kinds of things patrons see themselves as able to come and do in this particular makerspace, but also gives Mo an understanding of whether or not patrons feel like they belong at the studio. You can use closed-ended and open-ended prompts in combination on a talkback board. With Mo's next time I want to prompt of try something completely different, you might add a question in there to say, like what, basically, asking people to fill in the kinds of things that they're hoping to do in the studio in the future. In the next video, we'll talk about using the data that has been collected. We will describe how to plan an implementation cycle, that is, how to think about setting up where you put your talkback board, when you're going to check back in with your team about what you've learned, and how you might move forward with that in your program or space based upon the data that was collected. Thank you very much for watching. We look forward to seeing you next time.